Okay, Nitani ko katsi koko kameksaki. Stealing in the daytime woman. Hello, my name is Paula Weaselhead. I'm from the Blood Reserve, from the Kainai First Nations, located in Standoff, Alberta. And I'm here to speak to you today about the jingle dress. The story goes, that one of the legends of the jingle dress is um, a young girl got sick. She was very ill. Her father had a dream about jingle dresses and the songs that went with it. In the days after following his dream, he instructed women from the, his village to make these four jingle dresses in which he, he had sang the songs and had described to them how they would dance in them. Therefore, from there he went and he uh, put his daughter on a blanket in the middle of a gathering and these ladies danced in these jingle dresses around her while uh, the, song, the songs were sung. Um, as they were passing this young girl, they noticed that she was becoming more and more vibrant. Life was being breathed back into her. At the end of those songs, she um, had seemed to come out of her sickness. Uh, this lady uh, lived a very long life. Her name was Maggie White, and she is from the Ojibwe from Whitefish Bay, Ontario. Um, when I was 16 years old, I had a dream that I was dancing in a jingle dress. I didn't know much about the style of dance at, at that time. I had shared my dream with my late grandmother, Irene Bolshills. At that time, she had told me that this dress was given to me and that I had the right to dance this style of dance. So from 16 onwards, I had found out more information about this dress, about this dance style, where it came from. When I was 40 years old, I made a journey to Whitefish Bay, Ontario with the dress that I dreamt about when I was 16. Once my family and I had arrived there, we had spoke to one of the elders and informed him of the dream I had had and the lady in my dream. Upon describing uh, this old lady that was in my dream and that her name was Maggie, the description I gave them had fit the description of his mother, Maggie White, the little girl in the stories about where this, this dad style came from. At that time, um, Tony White, he was the elder we had spoke to, had informed me that we weren't going to do a sweat lodge ceremony or anything like that. Um, what he was going to do was they were going to, they were going to induct me into, initiate me into the Jingle Dress Dancers from Whitefish Bay, Ontario. So on the Sunday of their powwow, they had a ceremony for me and I was initiated then. I had shared my dream with the people from this community and had felt very honored that they would do this for me. Um, in his words, he had said, this lady honors us. She comes from a long ways and she honors us to share the string of the jingle dress with our people. So we're gonna honor her by initiating her into the Jingle Dress Dancers from Whitefish Bay. So that is how I received my honor in dancing this dance style. Most people, when jingle dress dancing first began, would use Copenhagen lids because that is the material that was available. Uh, with the spread of this dance style and the popularity, there have been more um, different people who are manufacturing jingles. So at one time, the only colors available were silver and gold. Uh, shortly after that, copper jingles were introduced. And just within the last year, 
uh, to raise more awareness with the MMIW murdered and missing Indigenous women uh, plight, they introduced red jingles. And yesterday, I had seen a site that were advertising purple, pink, iridescent, different color jingles. So of course my mind went, oh wow, what can I do with these? You know, so it's quite exciting to see that there will be more, um, more of a selection, more choices for us to pick from in terms of uh, color jingles. Uh, so it's quite fun. Um, quite exciting to make new things, make new dresses. Um, just to speak to the dress I dreamt about, it was a black dress with pink rose and the pink rose are where the jingles would sit. And I continue to keep that dress. That is my special dress. I don't use it in competition. Um, I've been honored to, uh, to be asked uh, to help in initiating young girls, little girls, other women into the dance circle, into the jingle dress arena. Um, I've been given tobacco and I've been asked to dance for healing, uh, for prayers, for, for many people. And I feel very honored um, to be given that, that role to do that. Um, so that is when I wear my special dress that I dreamt about. Um, So I, I've been dancing since I was 37 years old. I re-entered the powwow arena as a jingle dress dancer. Um, I had stopped dancing 19 years before that due to the, lose, the loss of two of my brothers. And my passion for dancing had went to sleep for a while. Um, so when I was 37, I, I started dancing again. Um, and in the world of powwow, it is a competition, um, and I've been blessed to have, uh, to have, you know, be picked for a few of those competitions and to be in the winner's circle. So I've always wanted to give back to my community. Uh, so one of the things that I thought that I would do in sharing what I know from dancing is to host a series of, um, workshop days for, for young girls, eight to 12, um, and teaching them, uh, you know, just basic steps to dancing, but also teaching them how to construct their own dresses. So for me, that would be my way of giving back to, to an arena that has been so good to me, to bring more young girls, um, to give them the opportunity to also be out there dancing. I, I've always noticed the young girls when I'm dancing and the looks on their faces, the looks of longing to be out there. I've had many young girls come and tell me, I wish I could dance. So this is my way of giving back to the community and helping, um, you know, and supporting them in that, you know, maybe this is where they will find their place as well. Um, the powwow arena, the powwow circle, uh, for me, that's a, a very, um, I, I, I enjoy that very much. Uh, just, you know, driving down the road, getting to the powwow, the excitement of seeing family and friends that you only see once a year during the summertime, during the powwow season, getting ready for that first grand entry, you know, that excitement building and just getting out there to dance. It, it's, it's a very exciting time. It's my self-care. It's my way of taking care of myself and my children. Um, it's what we do together as a family. So it's, there's very, a lot of positives to that. And I just would like to share that. So that is one of my goals at this time is to help the young girls in my community that would like to learn how to dance, but also to empower them to make their own regalia, to make their own dresses so that, you know, they can, there's nothing hindering them from moving forward with dancing because they will have the skills to know how to make their own dresses. 
but also the skills on knowing how to dance and how to take care of themselves, how to comb their hair, how to carry themselves um, when they're out there. So that's something that I would like to give back to my community. Thank <laughs> you. 